Working in a carpentry shop without a mask, I've picked up a chronic, low-grade nasal runny nose over the years, so I keep a box of tissues in every room. Isabel, my wife of 20 years, doesn't mind tissue boxes in our bedroom or family room, but in the rooms where we host guests, she hates them. Yesterday, Saturday, I was sitting in the living room in the faint rays of a rare winter sun with my laptop, going through email, when Izzy appeared in front of me with a deep frown. Graham, that's me, Graham Brody, 45, owner of Brody Carpentry. Yes, dear. In any successful marriage, the man always has the last word, which is yes, dear. That's what makes, or made, our marriage happy. We need to talk. Oh crap, now what? I roll my eyes so I can't see her, but I can't hide a sigh. Yeah, I've read enough stories to know what happens next. Right now, it feels like I'm doing something wrong all the time. Where and when? Right here and now. Look where you put that napkin, she points to the used one I put on the coffee table. What about it? Don't put a wet napkin on the tree, it will leave a wet stain on it, and you know what wet stains do to wood surfaces. Spare me, wood is something I work with every damn day, and her voice sounds like a first grade teacher scolding a stupid kid. I don't need this. Without a word, I get up and walk to the workshop behind our garage. I take a short piece of 2x4 scrap wood and smack it against the edge of the workbench with all my might. Two pieces break off and fly through the air. That's it, I exhale, feeling better. On a whim, I sketch out a quick plan for a new coffee table, similar to the one we have, but with a thin perspex tabletop. As usual, I make a list of materials needed, get in my pickup truck, and head out to Lowe's. Doing things with my hands is a great way to blow the steam out of my head. What the hell? Izzy and I have lived in this house for over 20 married years. I inherited it when my grandfather passed away, and we've gradually renovated and modernized it, adding two new bedrooms for our kids. In all that time, my napkins on the coffee table have never bothered my beautiful wife, so why today? Something is going on, but what? It's not the napkins, if it was, she would have complained about it 10 years ago and never stopped. It has to be something new, a new disapproval of who I am and what I do. But what? We've always done well financially, so Izzy has never needed anything in the bedroom. We both achieve satisfaction as often and as intensely as we want, at least as far as I'm concerned. Neither of us refuses the other, and mutual happy sighs always complete the procedure. Barring brief disagreements, we never fight, and we've always liked the same things in each other's friends. So what? Something deeper must be bothering her. As I wander around the low store and pick out the lumber and hardware I need, I keep going over my options in my mind. As I'm loading things into the truck, the fry store across the street catches my eye. It's still over an hour before lunch, so I stroll the aisles looking for electronic gizmos. When I finished, I come back with several voice recorders, baby monitors, and cameras, all of them wireless. Back at the store, I plug everything into an old laptop and drop one of the recorders into the console of her car while she fiddles in the kitchen with lunch. I stash the camera and baby monitor in our bedroom and the office we share. Lunch passes in tension and silence until she sighs. What's bothering you, Graham? Wrong question, wrong time, I snap as her fork drops into her plate, and her mouth falls open. What are you talking about? Get the snotty napkin you were whining about this morning. I didn't, let me finish. No, you were whining. You kicked my ass for supposedly messing up the damn coffee table. For over a decade, I've been putting napkins on the coffee table. Over a decade, Izzy, and not a word from you, and suddenly today it's a big problem. And no, it's not the napkins. For the last few months, you've been finding faults with me over dozens of insignificant little things. You're not happy with me. I don't think I've changed, but suddenly I'm no longer good enough for you. Who has changed? It's you. I've been good enough as it is for over 20 years, and now suddenly I'm not anymore. So to answer your question, what's bothering me is you. Izzy's hand holding the fork drops, tears streaming down her cheeks, not a sound came from her open mouth. 
Thanks for lunch, I get up and head back to the workshop to give her a chance to digest my bombshell and continue working on the new coffee table. Half an hour or so later, her voice comes over the intercom, I'm going shopping. No apology or desire to talk more. Okay, I mutter. No usual affectionate words from either party. When her car leaves, I take the electronic equipment and set it up in the kitchen. Back in the workshop, I track her location on the phone lookup app we both have. It turns out to be in an upscale residential neighborhood far from the stores. Interesting. I get in my truck and drive past the house. My worst nightmare. It's Brandon Schmidt, her high school sweetheart and the vice president in charge of her department. Now I have a name. We've been to their house a few times for company parties where I get to know him and his snooty wife, Mandy. Is Mandy there? Probably not. I park across the street, a few houses away, and put my phone to work. After a few minutes and a few dollars, I have Mandy's cell number, which I call. It goes to voicemail, which is not surprising because of scammers. I don't answer the phone either unless they are from my contacts. If they want to talk to me, have them leave a voicemail, which I do. Mandy, it's Graham Brody. I have an important and very urgent question for you. Please call me, you have my number. Three minutes later, she calls. Thank you for calling, I say in a friendly voice. Are you home? Her tone is icy. No, I'm in Maryland with my mother. My wife's white Infiniti SUV is parked in the driveway of your house. She told me she was shopping, so she's lying. I know you don't like me, but I thought you might be interested to know. If you have a neighbor you trust, you can ask her to check it out. Draw your own conclusions and make informed decisions. Her voice softens. What are you going to do? I haven't decided yet, but I'm going to see a lawyer on Monday. Do you know one? No, I answer. Do you? My sister got divorced two years ago. I can get her information. Maybe we can split it up and save some money. Sounds good to me. You have my number now. Let me know as soon as you get confirmation. I paused. Hi, sorry to be the bearer of bad news. A deep sigh sounded. I understand. Thank you for taking the risk and making the effort. How did you get my number? Not without difficulty, but I can tell you for sure. Are you going to hire a private investigator? It would do us both good if your neighbor knocked on your front door and took a picture when your husband answered, but no, this is a no-fault state. All we need to get a divorce is file the petition, no reason is. Hmm, never thought of that. Okay, I'll let you know as soon as I find out about a divorce lawyer and what your neighbor finds. Tell you what, I'm located near your house, why don't we meet her and go together? Good idea. I'll let her know when I call her. We hung up, and I reached forward. Fifteen minutes later, a middle-aged blonde woman walks across the street toward me. We shake hands, and I find out her name is Wanda. After talking for a while, we strategize. Wanda walks up to the crook's front door, leans against the doorbell, and bangs on the door with her flat hand. Brandon! Brandon, open up! I walk back to my car. It takes a good five minutes before he opens, red-faced, sweaty, and dressed in a bathrobe. What's the matter? There's been a death, you must get Izzy to call her husband immediately. His red face pales. What? Who died? Clearly trying to gloss, he stammers, what are you talking about? Stop it, Brandon. There's no time for your ramblings, this is serious, life and death. Whose car is that in your driveway? It's hers, isn't it? So, knock it off. Bring her to the front door. My phone rings. Isabel must be standing off to the side, but she hears everything. I open the connection. She wastes no time with greetings and excuses. What's so urgent? Who died? Not who but what? Our marriage. What are you talking about? I went shopping. 
getting naked at Brandon's house. I'm right here, you lying cow, right behind your car. So he called me to discuss something, and I stopped by on my way to the store. Is there no limit to this bullshit? Deceitfulness. Any chance of saving the marriage goes out the window if that's the case. Walk out the front door now. I wait without disconnecting the call. As expected, she doesn't appear, and after 30 seconds, I continue. See, you can't because you're not dressed. I may not be the one for you, but I'm not stupid. Don't bother coming home. I'm changing the locks and took the garage click out of your car. When Mandy gets back tomorrow, she'll probably kick Brandon out, so if you get dressed, you two will have the rest of the day to find somewhere else to live. In any case, do not, I repeat, do not come to my house tonight. While she was getting dressed, I flattened three of her tires. I was already getting busy on the fourth when she shows up, muttering something to Brandon. I get up, look at them, cross the street, and leave without saying a word. By the time she gets home, I'm putting all her stuff in garbage bags in front of the garage door. I stand at the front door with my arms folded. Graham, let me in. Why? All your stuff is in there. Load them into the big SUV you just have to have and take it with you. You can even keep the shopping you went shopping for. You don't live here anymore. Of course, I do. No, just my name on the title. Grandfather left it to me before I even met you. Go away if you don't want to be served at work. Be sure to let me know your new address. Graham, stop it. Nothing happened here. It is right here, she frowned. What are you talking about? About lying. You're saying nothing happened. I saw Brandon take forever to open the door, and when he did, he was red, sweaty, out of breath, and wearing only a robe. You couldn't get out either. That doesn't fit anyone's description of nothing happening. So as you can see, we have a difference of opinion. You have no proof that anything happened. This just confirms it. Confirms what? Our disagreement. It's irreconcilable. That's the number one reason for divorces, irreconcilable differences. Your problems weren't tissue related. You've moved on. I'm not good enough for you, at least not as good as your buddy Brandon. But good news, Mandy's coming back on Sunday, and she and I will be filing for both of you at the same time on Monday. We're using the same attorney, so we'll be able to share all the videos and photos of your adventures that she captured. If you accept our reasonable separation offers, no one else will see this mountain of evidence, but if either of you decides to fight back, the whole world will see them. Pictures, videos, and recordings of your conversations, in which you insult not only us but many other people. So, it's time for you to go. Bye. I opened the door, stepped inside, and slammed it shut before she could move. Epilogue, Izzy and Brandon were lucky enough to exercise common sense and good judgment and didn't fight the divorce. They moved in together at first, but before the divorce was even final, Brandon caught Izzy cheating with their neighbor. Clichés become clichés for a reason, they happen all too often. As Mandy and I worked through the details of our divorces with our attorney, we got to know each other better, first just in a friendly way and after a few dates, in a biblical way. Neither of us seems outstanding, but we discover that we both have a delightfully wicked sense of humor, and we both like to have sex a lot. I never thought I could learn so many new positions at this age. She just laughed when I told her that, but she didn't laugh when I did it, with my knees a year later. Yes, she yelled at the restaurant, and yes, she yelled in our bedroom. Since she and Brandon were renting their house, moving in with me was a breeze. As the story goes, it wasn't long before old Brandon was sleeping with another married woman. Her husband was less than eager to catch them in the act, and poor Brandon's sexual prowess ended prematurely. The husband, a police officer, gave his wife a choice, report the rape or confess to being promiscuous. She chose the former, and Brandon skipped town. Izzy abandoned her attempts to gain absolution when she confronted not one but both participants who she had wronged with her betrayal. A year later, she returned to our hometown in Georgia and disappeared from sight.
Mandy doesn't mind the napkins on the coffee table, as it turns out. She wasn't arrogant, just very shy. Three kids and their friends are the perfect cure for shyness. Every anniversary, we officially assure each other that we don't look at anyone, which means we don't need to talk, except of course for the yelling when certain things happen in our bed.